in Bahrain cracked down with a vengeance. Thousands of mostly Shiite protesters had camped out overnight in Pearl Square in central Manama, inspired by the occupation of Tahrir Square in Cairo. But before dawn, the Sunni-dominated government ordered the security forces to attack. They fired tear gas, buckshot and rubber bullets at the protesters, many of them still in their tents. CBS Radio News reporter Tula Vlahu is in Bahrain. Most of them were speaking. Uh, there were many families there, women and small children, and they were attacked uh, for no reason, according to the protesters. A reporter for ABC News who was in the square suddenly found himself under attack by the police as his tape recorder rolled. By dawn, the square was cleared and the hospitals were full of wounded. It's very eerie, it's very surreal to be in a place where just a few hours ago there were throngs and throngs of people uh, just celebrating what they felt was newfound freedom and feeling that they were on the cusp of change in their country. To now come back and find it really occupied by the police and the military. Violence also broke out again in Yemen. Pro and anti-government forces clashed in Sana'a and in the southern city of Aden, hospital officials say police opened fire, killing at least three protesters. No matter what the price, says this man, we will stand until Saleh goes. And in Libya, anti-government protests spread to several cities as crowds threw rocks at police vehicles and ran riot in the streets. The security forces responded with live ammunition, and there were unconfirmed reports of a dozen or more people killed. Governments are increasing the amount of force they're using against protesters, but nonetheless, tomorrow is expected to be another huge day of demonstrations across the Middle East. Terry McCarthy, CBS News, Cairo.